Hello everyone, in this video I will show you how to use the Vaporwave Retro Poster Photoshop Action. This Photoshop Action will turn your photos into the ever popular Vaporwave aesthetic. You will have lots of different elements which you can customize. Once the action is run, I will show you once I run the action and cover in details the customization tips. But with this action, you can easily create a Vaporwave styled 90s retro poster and I'm sure you'll like it. Alright, let's jump into Photoshop and let's load up our image on which we'll apply the action. So let's try applying the effect on this angel statue. But before that, let's load up the files. For that, you'd simply need to go to File, Open and browse to your download package and go inside this main files of the Vaporwave Retro Poster Photoshop Action folder and inside that you will find a folder called Install Files Inside. Go inside that and you will see there are three files. One is the Vaporwave Action, one is the Brush file and the other is the Patterns file. Select all three of them and simply click Open and it will load all those files into Photoshop. To check the action, you can go to Window and then Actions and it, this will open up the Actions panel and over here you can see the Vaporwave action. It has been loaded. You can also check the brushes, go to Brushes and then if you expand the brush list, you will see here that you will be having the Vaporwave brushes. And also if you want to confirm the patterns, you can go to Window Patterns and you will see that the vaporwave patterns should also be loaded. All right, there are a few settings that you need to make sure that are set correctly before you run the action. Just go to image mode and make sure your image is in RGB color and eight bits per channel. Then click this flyout menu just on the very right of this layers panel and then go to panel options and make sure use default masks on fill layers and add copy to copy layers and groups are checked. Now, Click your brush tool and make sure the mode is set to normal and the opacity and the flow both of them are set to 100%. These two parameters and the mode needs to be set like this for the action to work correctly. Alright, now let's prepare our image before we run the action. Since you have seen in the examples there are lots of elements around the main image so it will be nice if we can just increase our canvas a bit just i'm using the crop tool to increase my canvas on top and around the sides that should be good and now we need to make a selection of our subject onto a new layer just create a new layer on top of your main image make sure the layer is on top of the main image you don't need to rename it with anything specific just create a layer and then you need to select your main subject. You can use any Photoshop tools like the quick selection. Make sure now you are selecting your main image and you can select it with the quick selection or pen tool or whatever you want to select with. You can also use the Photoshop subject selection tool. Simply go to select and subject. It did a pretty decent job, but we can refine the edges with the quick selection tool. And once that is done, I'll simply select the blank layer that I created and I'll take any color and then I'll fill that selection. Let's deselect the selection and we are all set to run our action. We have our main image on the bottom layer and we have our subject area on the top layer. So now we are ready to run the action. Simply open the actions panel and select the main vaporwave action. It's written here, select this and play. We also have an extra action, which we will come to after we run this main action. All right, let's select it and hit play. It will take some time for the action to process. We'll fast forward from here and get back when it's done. All right, the action has finished processing and here is the final result. let's jump into the customizations but before that just wanted to mention that these are some utility actions please don't touch them rename them or run them it will not work and might break the interactions functionality let's collapse this for now and here at the very beginning we are highlighted on this layer which says place extra elements here and what this does is you can go to the download package and you will see there is a PhD file called extra vaporwave graphic elements you'd simply need to open it into Photoshop and over there you will find some cool vaporwave styled graphic elements you can simply select any one of them and take your move tool and drag and drop them onto your composition and then you can just spice up your entire composition with this cool vaporwave retro elements. Let's place some more.
and let's drop these palm trees because for vaporwave aesthetic it needs some palm trees right let's duplicate this one let's select this rectangular marquee tool right click and let's select free transform and let's resize rotate it and do all the good stuff all right let's explore the different options that we have here first is the background and it has the background gradient and the clouds you can double click here to change the background gradient styles you can change the colors just like this and also for the clouds you can move it if you want to change the position of the clouds use your move tool to change it also you can double click on this gradient layer and change the clouds gradient color if you want to do it i'll keep it to the default for now and let's go into the graphic elements here we have the sun you can again select the rectangular marquee tool right click and select free transform and then you can increase the size of the sun just like this and move and do all sorts of transformation stuff also if you expand this group you will see there are two layers one is the sun base and the other one is the sun glow so you can also double click on this layer thumbnail and change the color of the sun if you just want to experiment like that next we have the grids and stripes you can again use your move tool to change the position of the stripes you can also duplicate them right click and duplicate layer and if you want to just create another copy place it somewhere else you can get all fancy with this also you have the option to double click on the layer thumbnail and you can change the color of this stripes and same goes with this grid you can change the color simply by double clicking and change the color from the color picker next comes the mountains same thing here use the move tool to change the position or use the free transform tool to resize it a bit you can also double click on this gradient map and change the color of the mountains the same goes for the palm trees same things use the move tool to shift the position or use free transform to resize or rotate them a bit double click on this gradient map and change the color if you wish to change them to something else next we have the particles we have particles one you can turn them on or off and then we have particles two you can also take advantage of these layer masks you can simply select them and paint with black if you don't want to show any area of these particles okay so we already covered this extra elements group and uh, before we move forward let me also highlight that all these extra elements are editable to some extent like let's select this windows 95 pop-up and double click on this this is a smart object so you go inside this and you can change the text if you want the link to the font file is here in this layer you can simply enable it and go to this link to download the font used over here you can change it to anything else that you want just like that you can also have the option to show hide some buttons and do certain types of customization with these layers now let's come into this image elements here we have the outline shadows so this corresponds to this shadow kind of outlines that separates the main image from the background same thing goes with these solid color fill layers you can simply double click on them and change the colors of this shadow outlines okay now we have the main image so here we have image partial and we have image full so ideally image full should do the job let's have a look inside this group so here is image full and here we have a brightness and contrast layer you can simply double click to bring up the editable brightness and contrast adjustment layer and you can change it in case your image is too bright you can reduce the brightness or if your image is too dark you can increase it and you can see the shift in the color and you can set it to anything that looks right according to your image you also have the option to double click on this gradient map and change it if you want to change the color of this gradient that applies on this image now it can happen that your shadow or the highlights are not getting proper dark and light values with this single image full layers so for that comes this image partial group inside this you have the option to show or hide different tonal values like this is the shadow areas 
So same thing goes here, you can simply open the brightness and contrast adjustment layers and take control of the shadow areas only. This happens the same way with the image full but here you have the option to control the different tonal areas like the shadows or the mid tones or the highlights. So this can be handy if you need to correct the tonal values precisely. Next we have the original color overlay. In any case if you want to overlay the image with your original color of the main image and you don't want this pink and blue kind of gradient so you can show this layer. You can also reduce the opacity if you feel it's too strong. Let's keep it like this and then we have default toning. It's better if it's kept untouched. And then we have this text elements. We have this katakana Japanese scripts which reads Vaporwave. You can put something else. You can simply go to Google Translate and create your own Japanese script and place it here. That should also work. And in any case, if you want to change the color, you can double click here to change the color of these scripts. Next, we have the texture overlay. It's pretty straightforward. You can simply show or hide and toggle these layers just to have the grungy textured retro poster look. You can keep them on if you want to have a vintage kind of textured look or just simply hide this entire group if you opt for a cleaner version. This black and white layer tones down this yellowish old paper kind of look. You can just crank up the opacity and it will clear the yellowish tint. You can hide it and you can see that a yellowish old vintage kind of tint falls on the image. So you have this option over here. And since this is a pattern file, you can select your move tool and double click on the pattern file and then drag this pattern if you want to have a specific part of this texture on your image. Okay, next we have the 20 color effects. These are 20 adjustment layers which you can show or hide with simply clicking this eyeball icon and apply a color look onto your image in just one click. You can also combine multiple and experiment and you can find some cool color compositions. Next we have some overall adjustments. Here you can correct your overall brightness and contrast and do all sorts of overall corrections. Okay, now let's again open our actions panel and let's have a look on this second action which is an extraction. It's the glitched effect. So this action is separate from the main action because this one creates some rasterized non-editable compositions. So it's better if you edit everything before you run this. And now that we are happy with the extra elements that we have added and the overall composition, we can simply select it and hit play. It will create a new document over where it applies the glitched and distorted RGB kind of effect. So here it is. Let's collapse the action window and let's zoom our image. So you have this VHS kind of glitched effect and everything you see is now compressed into one snapshot. This is non-editable from here, but you have some control over the textures or the color overlays you can experiment with also over here. But your main composition remains as it is in the other document. So this should be all about the action. Also, if you are not happy with the selection or made something wrong, you can simply delete this group and then again run the action. Before wrapping up, we also have this action. It's called important help guides, which generates the help guide. You can click it, you can select it and hit play to have a snapshot of the important checkpoints that you need to follow to run this action correctly. Also, everything is documented here in this help file that you'll find in the download package. You can refer it anytime for help. So that's all for the Vaporwave Retro Poster Photoshop action. I hope you like it. And if you want to check out more cool artistic Photoshop actions that I have created, you can check them from the link in the description section. I'll see you soon and till then, happy creating.